Okay, so to understand why we want to compose or combine functions, I pulled some data, some real world, real world data. And you guys are all probably too young to have watched Steve Jobs' um, announcement of the original iPhone. Uh, but it's kind of actually kind of an interesting announcement to watch, just to, kind of, to see the difference. Because back in the day, BlackBerry was very, very popular, and that was about it. It was all flip phones or maybe slide phones, so you could text really quickly. But there was nothing like iPhone when it first came out. And there was a concern by business analysts that when they introduced the iPhone, that it would cannibalize the iPod market. Okay, so back at that time, this was back when Zoom was, you know, they were trying to make Microsoft Zoom and so forth, iPod sales were going up, 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 up. Okay? And then iPhone was introduced. And when he made that announcement, he said, oh, one more thing, you know, you've been talking about the touch and how many songs you can have in your pocket and that it's this beautiful interface and that you can double click on, you know, a web page to view the text, you know, showing this all these neat features and the games that you can play and so forth. And one more thing, wouldn't it be great if you had a phone that could do all of these things? Introducing iPhones, okay? So business analysts were concerned. They said, hey, you've got a good thing going on here. You've got iPod sales that are just going crazy. Okay, about this time, it was introduced in the end of 2008, we had a peak of iPod sales, right? And then what starts happening? It starts decreasing, okay? It's starting to decrease because it's cannibalizing the market, isn't it? So you have to wonder, okay, are they better off having this new product that's actually eating up their market share for the other, okay? So let's look at what is happening here then. I took these pieces of data, okay? iPhone sales, iPod sales over time. And I put that into a graphing calculator or a spreadsheet or a Desmos would do the same thing, okay? And I found a trend line. Now you can argue that this really isn't a good trend, trend line for this data. Because look what was happening or what is happening. It looks more like a curve, doesn't it? Okay, so you may be able to argue that this is more like an exponential growth, which we haven't studied yet in this class. Or you may argue that this looks actually looks more like what? Decay. Decay or even, what are we studying right now? Parabola. Parabola is quadratic, okay, an inverted right quadratic reflected across the x-axis okay but for now we'll just we'll work with the numbers as being linear but okay with everyone okay so what's happening here then is our phone sales are doing a upward growth and our ipod sales are trending downward right so if we combine these two functions, one function f of x is 23.684x minus 44.745, and the other is g of x, negative 5.5663x plus 66.23. We combine those, watch what happens. <coughs> There's our com combined sales for iPhone and iPod, okay? So that begs the question, were they better off introducing a whole new phone or would they have been better off just to stay with iPod potentially? What would you, what do you think? Blue line is iPod, yellow line is iPhone, but this was the combined iPod and iPhone. Yeah, kind of this yellow line had the steeper curve, right? So it did cannibalize it. Okay, but realize too that we were probably at the cusp of somebody else developing a touch screen phone as well, right? So they just happened to be the first one to get a viable option out of the gate. And you would have to also figure out how much is their profit on this iPod 
how much is their profit on this iPhone. And you also have to calculate in now that we, we have an app store and how many apps are <coughs> used and so forth and so on. So there's a lot of math involved with these things. And that's why we want you to have this information and, and these processes and these understanding of statistics and equations and functions and so forth so that you could become a business analyst and help make those decisions. That makes sense? All right, so relocation, we're going to talk about that right now. We can combine functions, and this is a perfect example of when you would do that. And it's called arithmetic combination of functions. So we're going to take two functions, f and g, and they have to have overlapping domains or it doesn't make sense to do it. We don't want to talk about something from the 1960s and something from the 2000s, right? Okay, something that doesn't exist anymore and something that is from the future. For every x they have in common with both domains, our notation says that if we add f and g of x, it's nothing more than taking f of x and adding g of x and combining like terms. If we're combining f minus g of x, we take the function that represents f of x and we subtract off the function that represents g of x. shows a multiplication of two functions as just f with g, so f, really f times g, we're taking f of x times g of x, and then they'll use a slash notation when they want you to divide f of x by g of x. And here we have to be cautious because we can't divide by zero, so it works if, f, if g of x is not equal to zero. You've been given two functions. f of x is 2x minus 5, and g of x equals 2 minus x. We want to figure out what f plus g of x is. So what do I do? Because 2x minus 5 plus 2 minus x, if you want to put them in parentheses, you can, is the same thing as x minus 3, yeah? Plus a negative 3. Combine your like terms. Easy enough? All right. F minus g of x. So 2x minus 5, we're going to take away this 2 minus x. So 3x, because a minus and negative is going to be positive. And negative 7. Negative 7. Minus 7. If it helps you to, just, to distribute that negative through, feel free. If you prefer to write it as g of x equals negative x plus 2, very good one, right? Our Algebra 2 book was careful to always put things that were linear with the x first. Our, our pre-calc book will say, hey, let's just put the negative minus x at the end instead. 
So if it helps you to rewrite, feel free. Okay? What are we going to do on this next one? Good. 2x minus 5 times the 2 minus x, or negative x plus 2. And how do we multiply? 4 over that, you bet. Multiplying two binomials together, 2x and a negative x is going to get us a negative 2x squared. Outside? Inside? Last? Good. So combining your like terms. <coughs> Last one, f divided by g of x. What do you think, Caleb? You're good. And here we have to be careful. We have to restrict our domain. We're going to have to stop and talk about domains here. What's the domain here? First example, All real numbers, right? We're using the real. Okay, how about the domain of this one? All real numbers, no square roots, no dividing by negatives, right? So we're fine. All right, but what do we have to say here? X can't be. Okay. And finally, what do they want us to do if they ask us to do this? F plus G of 5. Trevor, where you see it in F plus G, right? We've already found F plus G, right? So we would go through this work if we hadn't already, and we have F plus G of X is negative X, I'm sorry, X minus <coughs> So now we want to plug in 5 everywhere we see x. So f plus g of 5 is going to be 5 minus 3 plus 5 minus 3. Sorry. What questions do you have about this one? Good. All right. Composition of functions. So the previous was combining algebraically, right? This is called composition of functions, and we have some new notations. We see things like fog and goth. But f composed with g of x, also written as f of g of x, and then the symbol is like putting a function into a function, okay? If f of x equals x squared minus nine, and g of x is the square root of the quantity nine minus x squared, we first find the domains to make sure that they're overlapping, and then we plug them in, okay? So, the domain of the f composed with g is restricted by the original functions, domains. So what's the domain here? All real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity in inter interval notation. What's the domain here? What can't we do in mathematics? In the real number system. Square root of a negative number. Okay, we're not dividing here, we're not dividing by zero, so we have to worry about that case. But we can't use the square root of a negative number. So, what makes it zero? Three or negative three, right? Okay, so what would make it a negative number? Is 
that was what's the num 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 one number that wouldn't be negative? Four. Four. Because when we get 16, 9 minus 16 doesn't work, right? How about negative 4? Negative 4 squared of 16, 9 minus 16 is a problem as well, right? So we have a nice little window, don't we? We can be from negative 3 up to positive 3. So, and we can be those numbers, so square bracket, negative 3 to positive 3, <coughs> Okay. So that means that if we compose these guys and we want to plug numbers in later, we have to make sure that they're only things like negative 3 to 3. Okay, we can't plug 4 or 16 or 27 into it. Or negative 59. Okay? Alright, so the domain of that composed of G was restricted by that function. And if we were trying to find F composed with G, all we do is everywhere we see an X in F, we plug in the G. Okay. This whole function gets plugged in everywhere we see an X. So F composed with G. is going to be the square root of 9 minus x squared squared minus 9. Do we square square root when we get? No. Nothing goes away, right? We just end up with what's inside. What is 9 minus x squared minus 9? So f composed with g in this situation is negative x squared, and we can only plug numbers in between negative 3 and a positive 3. Okay? Including negative 3 and positive 3. What questions do you have about this slide? of x is x squared plus 2x, g of x is 2x plus 1, we're going to find f composed with g. So f composed with g is the same thing as f of g of x. Now I need to simplify. What do I get if I take 2x plus 1 and square it? Be careful. Both 2x plus 1 point and square. 2x times 2x is 2x plus 1. Right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your body squaring a binomial, square the first term, multiply the first and last, and double them, square the last. 
don't lose your forex along the way. Okay. Distribute here. And then combine the right terms. So these two go together. These two go together. And we have now found F composed with two of X. Do we have any restrictions on the domain of either? No. So we can use all real numbers and reporting numbers in if we want. Okay? So could G compose with F? G compose with F says everywhere you see X and G, plug in this thing. So <coughs> F will be 2 times X squared plus 2X plus 1. <coughs> Make sense? Distribute. What questions do you have about composition of functions? So if I told you to find g composed with f of negative 2, what would you do? Yeah, plug it in. Compose them first in that order, and then plug negative 2 in everywhere you see x. of a function says that two functions f and g can be composed with each other to get an h of x. Tell me what f of x and what g of x are. So working our way backwards. And there's no one right answer here. There are multiple versions of right answer, or multiple possibilities here. So what can we let f of x be, and what can we let g of x be, so that when we compose them, we get h of x. Here's where my mind goes. I see a, a big thing here, right? So I start to think, well, what if my f of s is something simpler, like this? <coughs> okay. 
And what would you like that to be? You want to compose them and get each of that stuff. Dozens of the answers that you can have for these. Yes, sir. Uh, can I possibly answer like people like g of x equals root 2 over or 2 minus x squared over x? Square root of 2 minus x squared? Yeah. Over x. And can okay. f of x be like 3 or does that not work? Oh, yeah, it doesn't work because you have the x on top. Okay. So you have to try. Plug something in, see if it works, and away you go. Okay. So. That one won't work. I'm, I'm trying to think of a way to make it work. I'm, I'm having trouble with that one. Okay. All right. So assignment is on your yellow sheet. I had one tiny change on that yellow sheet. Um, I had the number 31 in here black. This was supposed to be a tumbling optional problem. Okay. So straight from the sheet, one minor change. Okay. 